Hey everyone, this is a Block TV podcast where we talk about music, movies, video games, and whatever the fuck else. It's June 20th, 2018, on this fine Wednesday, 12 o'clock hour. Hey everyone, how's it going? How's the hump day starting? People in Somniac staying the fuck awake. Hope you're all doing well. God damn it. How are you? How's it going? Anyway, I have something on my mind recently. And uh, let's start off with this. First off and foremost, there was a huge controversy because the a Russian, a 21-year-old Russian, started a thing called Active Shooter, but he's also done other games like Tide Pod Challenge and so on and so forth on Acid.Software. The reason why I'm doing this, it's not a plug. It's just, I don't understand how someone would blame video games or they would blame an artist for something. Okay? Um, What a person says and does is meaningless compared to actual physical harm. So, what I'm trying to say is, guns are the problem. Guns were made to kill people. Words are just words. Okay? And the thing that's upsetting to me is that we, as a society, attack video games and we attack movies and whatever else, but we don't go to the actual source of the problem. Why is it that every time when, you know, uh, an issue like a horrible thing happens, a massacre, if you will, in the United States. And the first thing that we love to do as a country is we always blame someone else for our own failures. Why is it that we blame, you know, like during Vegas? Why do we blame security? We blame windows. We blame so many goddamn things. But we don't go to the root of the problem. We're like, every Fox News garbage pundit goes on there like pawns and just says whatever bullshit that they get feed into this atrocity of articles that these fuckers write for assholes like Sean Hannity and psychopaths like Alex Jones and fuckers like, who's that other stupid shithead? The Mormon. What's that Mormon fucker's name? Glenn Beck. Or as I like to say, Glenn Fuck. (laughs) And Fuckabee Sanders and all these people. It's just, it's funny to me that they always, you know, they always criticize something, but they don't go to the actual root of the problem. And that's troubling. You know, and, and, and these are the same people that are blaming a video game. Like during Columbine. People were blaming Marlon Manson for fucking lyrics in a song. Are you fucking kidding me? Really? You're going after a person who makes a living off of a song. Or go after a person... It's like, okay, well, here's the thing. Why is it that in this country, let's say you eat a piece of toast. And let's say you got that toast from a grocery store. And that grocery store accidentally got shards of glass in that toast. And you didn't know. And that hurts you. What do you do? You go to court. You file a lawsuit because there was dangerous shards of glass in the toast that you ate. You had to have stitches in your mouth. And you had to pay all this in your medical expenses. Let's say at a grand, hypothetically speaking, you had cut up in fractions in your tongue and you're in the hospital for a week and the person sues and they win a $50,000 lawsuit. So what I'm saying is that happens all the time in the United States. People buy things from a consumer And when that product of that consumer happens to them, that is not supposed to happen within the product, they sue. 
and they win a huge lawsuit. So why is it that when we have these huge occurrences of massacres and they're caused by these psychopaths with these guns that they buy from a manufacturer, why are they the ones not being able to be sued? That's what I don't understand. Those are the people who should be sued. The people who make the AR-15, the Bushmaster, whatever else, those are the people who should be sued. Every single person who was involved in Vegas, every single person who's involved in a San Antonio church, every single person who was involved in Columbine, Virginia Tech, and everywhere in between, should sue. Because someone was making a pro because someone makes a product that is made for destruction. And a person used a product against another person. So why isn't why is it that they cannot sue them and make money like they would with the guy who accidentally bought the wrong bread at the grocery store that had tainted glass on it. You see where I'm getting at? Those are the people that are causing the problems in society. It's not the video games. It's not movies. It's not what the fuck Marlon Manson sings. Go to the root of the problem. For example... Look at Adolf Hitler. Okay? Yeah, you can see propaganda. You can keep taking down... You can be in Germany in 1942 taking down Nazi propaganda. But the root of the problem is Adolf Hitler. You see where I'm getting at? And you know what he did? He was a pussy and he shot himself in the face. Because the Americans were closing in on him. Do you see what what my point is? If you don't, you're fucking stupid. Because I don't know any other way to to tell you people. Um, so yeah, and the thing is too, like um, Steam has also banned Acid, and they also ban them on Indiegogo. I went on their Twitter account, um, and I emailed them because I asked them for a uh, for an interview. I I really want to interview the person behind. These vi- controversial video games, because I also think it would be publicity for him, because you know the old saying goes, you know, any publicity is good publicity, and um, and that's the thing. Ba- these people who are against this video game are just fueling the trolls' fire more. It would be better if they never responded. If people just blatantly just ignored it, they looked at it and went. Ah, idiot. And they just ignored it and moved on from it. I I think it wouldn't have gotten the attention it would have got. Because now they got all this negative attention, but then they have a lot of other people who are like me who are like, it's just a video game. What the fuck's wrong with you? And then people get curious and they look at it and they play the game. That's exactly what happens. You should see the tweets. People go, wow, I really want to buy this game now ever since the controversy. The game looks horrible. The The detail is, you know, early 2000s at best. Um, the AI is garbage from what I've seen on YouTube. Um But yeah, you can actually download the demo um, on their website. And uh, here's the problem with that. They took the AI out. And it's only one level. And it's like, what's the point of a demo then? That's not even a demo. A real demo would be, okay, just do one level or two levels. Have a little bit of AI. You don't have to have a lot of AI. Um, And then just do like one or two weapons. And that's it. Keep it simple. You don't have to have a bunch of SWAT or a bunch of cops coming in. Like, you just keep it simple for the active shooter video game. Keep it simple. You don't have to like... But when you do it like that for a demo, who's going to play that over and over? You know, I've played way better demos than that. I mean, Jesus Christ, I I find Tomb Raider the best demos I've ever played. 
I remember as a kid when I first bought my very first PlayStation, it came with a demo. And it came with like over 100 games on one disc. What was cool about PlayStation back then is because PlayStation, um, the disc was also a CD disc. So what was cool about that is you could take that CD and put it in your CD player and you could listen to the music of the video games. That's what I found fascinating about PlayStation was I, I, fi- I thought I was a genius for figuring that out. I'm like, what would happen if I put this disc in my CD player? And I was listening to the Tomb Raider theme song. I was listening to all kinds of theme songs. And, you know, Resident Evil and whatever else. And that was the cool thing about that PlayStation demo disc. It gave you a bunch of trailers, inside scoop, a lot of demos from different video games. And it was fun. Um, But, yeah, it's just a video game. And I don't know why people are so hell-bent on a video game. So I'm really hoping that they will respond to my email and we can do a podcast or maybe just do a little Q&A session with just, you know, chat back and forth meth- messages and post on my website with, of course, permission because, you know, you have to ask legally. And, um, but yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, anyone is willing to do a podcast or messages with me, go ahead. Um, I speak my mind, so I'm pretty blunt on a lot of things. Um, I kind of feel like I have a personality like Anthony Bourdain, like very similar to him. And I never back down. I'm always honest. I'm always blunt about things. Um, so there's that. Um, also there's a girl that I was writing and she got really annoyed with me and she said, if you don't stop, I'm going to file, you know, a report, whatever, basically saying, that if I write her one more time, she's going to file a restraining order against me. So I'm like, oh, that's nice. But I was kind of like trying to push her buttons to see what she would do. And then now it's like, okay, I'll stop. I'll leave her alone now. I just did it because she's a fucking bitch. And I don't appreciate having my feelings hurt, you know? Don't fucking be a bitch and fucking tell someone that you're going to be their friend and then you're not their friend. It's fucked up to do and it's not right. So, I hope I taught her a lesson. She's a cunt. And, uh, you know, I hope I taught her a lesson. So, now I will leave her alone. Now, I'm not going to mention her name because she doesn't uh, need to know. And also, I think I think she knows about my podcast. <laughs> because I wrote, I wrote her on the Block TV Inc. Instagram account. So... I'm pretty sure she knows about the podcast. I don't really give a fuck. Um, I just, I, I'm, you know, I am a nice guy, but once you like push me, I can be vicious and I will make your life a living hell. <laughs> I'm a dick sometimes, and it's like that's what I do. I'll be a dick to you, and then once you, I hit your breaking point. Then I'll be like, okay, this person is really pissed off. They're getting nuts. I'm going to calm it down. It's kind of like being a troll. And then once you get, you go too far, then it's, you should step away. Like that, that's why I tell people, if you're going to bug someone or annoy someone, do it. And then once they throw that out at you and say, oh, I'm going to follow, you know, restraining order, or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Then leave them alone and don't talk to them anymore. You already made your point. You already pushed their buttons. You already make them hate you and they're mad at you. So now leave it alone. I'm serious because there's no point of trying. It's not fun anymore then. You, you, that's the whole point. When you're trying to troll and piss someone off, you're trying to get them wild up enough where you hit their tipping point. And once you do, then you back away. And you you already did what you wanted to do. You wanted to make them uncomfortable. You wanted them to hate you. You wanted them to, you wanted them to, you know, be pissed off at you or annoyed or fearful or sad or whatever emotion you're going for. Once you know they hit that emotion, then just leave it alone because you already made your point. You already did that. And I know it sounds like cynicism, but it's true. I mean, it. it it's I like to give people insights and lessons. It's it's don't tell someone you're going to be their friend and then not be their friend. 
make it, you know, it's not hard to be a friend. And then my, my favorite part about her was she said stuff on the lines of, oh, but I just feel like, you know, you need something more than just, hey, how are you? And I just feel like I can't be that friend for you. That is such a bunch of bullshit. Really? Oh, okay, so you can't be a friend for someone, but you can go on a dating app and post a ton of new cute pictures to get a guy's attention. Go fuck yourself. Like, seriously? Fuck you. Unbelievable. That's what pisses me off about women. Women are are seriously these, these people that like... Oh, look at me. I want attention. And then when you give them the attention, it's like, get the fuck away from me. Like, are you serious? Make up your fucking mind. This is what I can't say about women. You got to be honest and truthful no matter what you do in life. I've always been that way. That's what I love about Larry fucking David is because Larry David is I, a lot of people go, oh, the complacent Jew. He's always annoying. He's always a dick. No, I'm serious. He actually speaks intelligently and he says anything that's on his mind that we're all thinking that's why he's such a creative genius when it comes to things like Seinfeld when it comes to things like Curb Your Enthusiasm which one or one of my all-time favorite shows and that's the thing that's amazing about Larry David is a lot of these things that he's done on Seinfeld are based on true occurrences, based on true stories. Even on Curb Your Enthusiasm, there are some stuff that he's gotten inspirations from things that have actually happened, like the airline thing. Like he heard, like he was talking to like a, a famous person on the airline, and he's like, "Hey, do you mind if I do this episode with this in there?" And she goes, "No, not at all." And it was a lot of controversy because I think it had like a lesbian in it or something. I forgot, but that's my point. Like he's honest. Like what? What the fuck is this? This tap water? This tap water is disgusting. Why would anyone drink this tap water? He goes, "Do you really like this, um, tap water?" What was his name? Eisenhower or something? Or, or oh, Funkhauser. You like this tap water, Funkhauser? And he drinks it and he's like, mmm, good tap water. And obviously you could tell it was shitty tap water. That That's my point. Like, that's how people should be. If you're not honest about something because you care about their feelings, you'll never have a great life. Oh, you know, on, you should always speak honesty. And I just find it hilarious that women always do that. They say, oh, I, I want a guy with honesty. And these bitches don't even give you the honesty. All these girls that I've tried to date or become friends with have never been honest with me. And also, I forgot to mention, I'm sorry for ranting, but I forgot to mention to you all that I actually was scheduled for a date today. And you know what happened? She texted me an hour before and said, I'm sorry for this. Actually, I'll read you the text message. This girl wrote me. Um, she seems nice, so I'm giving her, I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and think that she really is sick. But remember, this happened to a girl that I tried to date in Rialto. So here we go. Um, she said at 4.57 p.m. yesterday, she said, I hate to do this, but could we push our metric to tomorrow? Meeting to tomorrow. I've got a super itchy, sore throat, and it hurts to swallow, so not a good idea to go wine tasting. So then I said, oh, no, I'm sorry. I hope you feel better. Okay, let me know what day and time works for you. Not a problem. Is it allergies? Try drinking tea. Hot tea. Smiley face. And then she said, I'm not sure. I'm trying to, I'm, I'll, I'm going to try everything I can. And I said, what does it feel like? Sorry you're not feeling well. Have you tried throat coat? That helps a lot. Feel better. It's a stinging pain when I swallow. What is throat coat? I don't think I've ever heard of that. Oh, no. I hope it's not, I hope it's not strep throat. Throat coat is an herbal tea. It will help you. That was the last thing I said today. No, it was like around seven-ish. So I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. 
and say that she's sick. Now, I know a couple people right now who are having sore throats, and it could be allergies. It could be. But I'm not... I am doing something that I've never done before, and this is waiting till she writes me. That is the object of the game. So I'm playing not only hard to get, but once she writes me, I write back. And I always wait between one to five minutes, depending. And what that does psychologically to a girl is she's going to think, oh, okay, this guy's a little busy today. You know, and here's the other thing. When you write back to someone like that, it's better to wait until they write you. See, like my best friend, she doesn't care because we're used to it. We write each other all the time, nonstop. It's in our nature. Now you got to remember, you got to remember, not everyone is like that. So if you do that to some people, they're going to freak out. So unless you know that person really well, it's a good idea to just wait as possible. And I know it sucks because I have severe anxiety issues, so it's really hard for me to do that. So what I do is I write the people all the time that don't care. So I write them my problems and my frustrations, and then I put it all on them, and then when I hear from that girl, then I'll write her back. You see what I'm saying? That way you get kind of, you know, that time away. So anyway, um, yeah, those are just my thoughts and dating and everything. So it really sucks. I really wanted to meet her. She's pretty cute. I met her on that Woo Plus dating site, just like all the others I've told you about. I've only done, only two of them were plenty of fish. Um, Two of them were plenty of fish. The rest were on Woo Plus, believe it or not. So... This girl seems pretty. She's down to earth. I like that her profile says she's spiritual. So we'll see what happens. Um, We will. And um, yeah, yesterday was Juneteenth. So that's the abolish of slavery. So I told everyone happy Juneteenth. Because I have a lot of black friends. And um, not a lot, but I've got like five. So anyway. um, I, I never... The thing I never understood um, is stupidity. You know, besides racism and everything else, I've never understood stupidity and people who are never honest with you. I I don't understand how someone cannot be honest with you. How hard is it to tell someone, oh, I'm sorry, Um, I've got a lot of friends and I don't feel like being friends or I'm just too busy. You did nothing wrong. I'm so sorry for hurting your feelings, but I'm just too busy to be friends right now. Um, maybe in the future, but for right now I need to concentrate on my career goals. I don't even hear from my mom, yada, yada, yada. And then I would have been on my way, you know? And my favorite part is when they go, oh, but I don't, I just felt like you don't deserve an explanation. You are talking to someone to go on dates with. You damn well know that someone deserves explanation, you fucking cunt. Like, that's... Ah, jeez. Women are just... I'd rather be gay. (laughs) Seriously. I wish I was gay. My God. My gay friends have a way better, easier life to find people than fucking straighties. These straight people are fucking pricks. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway... Um, I do this, the Block TV podcast as a form of a hobby, I guess you could say. Um, and it's kind of like a personal journal. I mean, you leave out important details, you leave out people's names and a lot of personal things, but you still are personal. You still talk about your life. You still bitch and cry and moan and complain, just like everyone else in society. So that's always a good thing, you know? Um... So it's just, I don't know. It's just, the world is not the place that we once knew. Um, It's just, I feel like those things like concentration camps with the Trumpty Dumpty and that asshole Jeff Sessions done. I mean, Jesus Christ. 
But yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to see her tomorrow. I mean, I'm not going to get my hopes up. If if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then I'm just going <laughs> to, I'll just be upset and just cry myself to sleep and then just not talk to her anymore. Um, but I'm glad she didn't stood me up. Um, you know, if I ever do see her in person, I'm going to say, hey, thanks for uh, writing me. I, I'm, I'm being honest here. I, I want to say thank you for being courteous and telling me that you couldn't make it. And that is really nice of you because there are a lot of people that I've been stood up and they never, ever give you a courtesy text or anything telling them that they can't make it. So I, it really meant a lot. I mean, you you don't realize how many people have done that to me where they just don't even show up. Not a text or anything. Or they'll play games with you and then they'll tell you the after fact. And then it, it was always something. Always something. It's like, ugh, it's frustrating. So, you know. I mean, you should get complimented for that. You know, but I just think it's funny when I tried to hang out with that one girl. She's super cute. And I tried to hang out with her and she was like... Oh, um, I don't know when I would be able to have time right now to hang out with you. And I asked her if we were friends. And she just never acted like a real friend. And here's the other thing. I want to bring this up because here's the thing. When a girl... I, I want to actually put this out here for people because I feel like this will help people understand. If a girl stops looking at your Instagram or your Snapchat or whatever, you should be weary. You should. Here's why. Because once a girl stops looking at your Instagram and your Snapchat, they're not interested anymore. I'm serious. That is the best indication that I have learned over my experience of just two years of dating. That that happens every time. Every time. I'm serious. Every girl I've tried to date, they go, hey, are you on Instagram? Are you on Snapchat? Let's follow each other. Yada, yada, yada. So you do. And for the first week or two, it's great. But then they stop looking. That's not, that's not normal. How is it that someone can get that busy that quick and they just distance themselves from you like that? So there you go. That's my point. You know, that's my point. You know, and I'm not like other guys. You know, I'm never going to date someone that has done disturbing things. Like, if you were an ex-porn star, if you did three ways and gang bangs, I'm not going to date a slut. Okay? The first girl I dated was a slut. She's done three ways. She's made out with a ton of girls. She's told me some very disgusting things. She's got stretched by a giant black guy. And I mean, I had sex with her and it just, it wasn't great. It was terrible. It was the worst experience of my life. And it just tore me apart. No one understands or feels bad for you. It's like you wanted your first time to be special and it wasn't. So it was a nightmare. Um, I just... I, w I want people to understand that um, this girl that I'm talking to, she's still looking at my Snapchat. Look, I'll show you. Well, I'm not going to show you, but I mean, I'm going to tell you. So um, I posted something on my Snapchat, and I'll read it to you. That's what I'll do because I have a personal one. I should do a Block TV Snapchat. I really should. I'm going to make one. Um so the last thing she looked on my Snapchat was when I said that was weird. I was checking my phone messages and I look up and I see a cop drove right past me and he stared at me when he drove away. Oh my God, that was terrifying. And it was. The cop just stared at me like the like he wanted to hurt me. It was scary. I froze. I didn't know what to do. I was so scared. Cops are scary, man. They're crazy. So I... um. That was the thing I posted 21 hours ago. And she looked at it. You see my point? She looked at it. 
The past few days, she's been looking at my stuff. Not everything, but when I went to the Lavender Festival, she watched everything I did on there. You see my point? And you realize how long I've been her friend on Snapchat? For over a month. That's my point. That's a good sign. And we're just friends. We're not dating. So there's no pressure. You see my point? And then I noticed too, the other thing I've noticed about this girl is I noticed uh, a trend here. I noticed that on that app, she's back on there again. I found her profile because I forgot what she looked like. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to walk into a place, go wine tasting with her. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh shit, I don't remember what she looks like. So... You know, like on the messages where you could put a picture at the very top. So that's what I did. I took a screenshot of her profile put, and then put her picture up there. So that way, I know who it is. I do that with everybody because it's just easier to remember. And it's just easier to to remember. That way you can just look at it and go, okay. Oh, that's what she looks like. And then when you see her and meet her for the first time in person, you know what you're getting yourself into. She seems like a nice girl. She does. And she makes a delicious cake. I was looking at her Snapchat and she made a cake for a friend's birthday. And then she went on vacation. I was watching all of her vacation stuff. And she was watching my stuff too. I mean, she watched me at the Lavender Festival. She watched me hanging out with friends, smoking cigars, drinking beers. So, I mean, and it's been over a month. So, you see where I'm getting at, people? I mean, that's a good sign. That means she's still intrigued. You see where I'm getting at? I mean, that's some good signs. Very good signs. Once she stops looking at your Snapchat, then you should be weary. You should. I'm going to post it also, um, my tips on the blogtv.com, and um, I'll tell you everything on there. Also, if you guys could be so kind, on the Amazon ads, please click on those. Even if you don't buy from that category, just search anything. because, And if you buy something, I make a little commission, and it will help me with my channel. So if you buy some on Amazon, go on the blogtv.com, click the link of any Amazon ad and then just type whatever you want buy something and then I make a commission because just off search results I can make something so I mean I can't have ads on here yet so it would mean a lot to me and um, you could also check me out on Instagram I have a block TV Instagram on there as well um, I'm going to start some other uh, apps I'm on Twitch I'm on I'm on a bunch of different social media platforms. Um, I used to be on Zoned, but I got tired of them because I post depressing stuff all the time. And those cocksuckers deleted my stuff all the time. Um, anyway, thanks for listening to the Block TV Podcast. You can like, comment, subscribe, do what you got to do. You can share this if you want. Um, check us out at theblocktv.com. Hopefully I can do the Acid Games podcast or maybe just do a in simple interview like through messaging back and forth and I can post the transcripts on my website um, you can also check us out instagram.com slash the block tv inc inc um, we're also on twitter twitter.com slash the underscore block tv yes because some douchebag had to take block tv um, anyway thanks for listening um, take it easy everyone I gotta take a massive dump.